whenever I'm talking to assistants around the country, that's the thing that I hear more often than not is the dentist is afraid to share those numbers. And it's, it, uh, it's a crazy thing actually. So well, yeah. It, it, and I tell my clients before every team member, you have to go over the confidentiality agreement, which is simple and simply states, we're going to be talking about some confidential practice business information and it is very critical as a professional that nothing we discuss at this meeting ever leaves the walls of this of this office and you don't share it with each other you don't share it with anyone else outside the practice and so i think that reminding especially the younger team members who don't see themselves as a professional i mean i belong to committees in my community and uh, one committee at church, and we go over the confidentiality. One thing of uh, the church is about, you know, the hiring and the job descriptions of those on the payroll. Of course, you don't discuss things like this outside the meeting and people that are on committees. And so making the dental practice feel as though we are in on the what's happening now and what could happen in the future just inspires them to want this practice to move forward. You know, and, and I'm going to circle back a little bit on you back to leadership, because I know that, you know, you believe so strongly that leadership really creates that culture within the practice. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like a dentist can do to kind of, um, uh, create that certain level of leadership and raise it to a higher degree within the practice? Well, I believe that each team member needs to have, uh, you know, as I said, an outline of their daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual duties. We need to know uh, right off the top of uh, the, the, uh, the employment, what are my shared responsibilities? Like there are always what I call scut work to do in a dental practice. And for some of the employees to think, well, I've been here the longest and I don't do floors and windows. You know, if, if there's a paper towel on the floor in the patient restroom, certainly that we should feel good about tidying up. Uh, my husband gets tickled at me because when I go to the grocery store, I'm annoyed by the number of people that don't put their carts in the corral. And not only do I put my cart in the corral, I straighten them up because some dingling before me just threw their cart in. <laughs> and so I think that's the dental assisting in me. And I don't consider myself to be OCD, but I do get really annoyed when people see things that could be done better and they don't do it. I'm glad I'm not the only one that takes shopping carts into the store because those just drive me crazy laying around the parking lot. I'm telling I know, you that. <laughs> I know, and I'll pick up three or four, and the poor little guy that's in charge will say, "Ma'am, I can take care of that." I said, "Well, you know, somebody's going to bump their car with this one, and this one's going to fall off that grassy spot." <laughs> that's funny. Uh, well, I I so much appreciate your time and I just want to wrap up and, and kind of see if, if there's some tips that you might want to share with, with the dentist viewers out there to really how they can create that career minded, self motivated, empowered team member. Are there any tips that you could share just to, to wrap up our talk today? Well, I think that first of all, the ad should not say the wrong thing, Kevin. There are so many ads that you read in uh, dentalpost.net. Uh, They're really good, however, at, at a good place to look. But I see some of the ads in local newspapers or in newsletters, and it, they always make the job sound good. Wonderful work week, four days, time off with pay benefits. And when you mention the good things in an ad, you're going to att attract the takers. There are two types of employees, the givers and the takers. And you want givers, especially if you're a giver, because if a giver hires a taker, no matter what you give this person, it's never going to be enough. So putting the right words in the ad and having your team members sit down as a, as a work challenge and just sit around a table and say, if we were looking for a new clinical assistant, what are four personal traits we'd want this person to have? And one person may say, well, I'd like this person to be uh, uh, dedicated and on time, prompt. 
I'd like this person to be cheerful and caring and a joy to be around. I'd like this person to be efficient and organized. I'd like this person to be, uh, um, you know, a people person. Whatever the personal traits are, have your team actually help you create the person you're looking for and have them do a sit in on the pre interviewing, narrowing it down to the top two applicants. And then the dentist, of course, has the final say. But um, I don't believe anyone knows our duties that we do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annually more than the person that's doing them. So I always say, have your current team members write the job description and to write the job description for the shared responsibilities. What are we expected to do beyond our normal duties of being a dental assistant or a hygienist? What are the shared things that we do? So I think, and, and the worst thing that dentists can do, Kevin, is create a prima donna or a queen bee. And we've all heard dental team members complain about these. Well, I did a lot of research over the years and I finally figured out what creates a queen bee and a prima donna. These people do not come into your practice with wings and halos. These are created by the dentist employer, and I hate to fuss about the dentist, but this is their fault, because of uneven distribution of trust, an uneven distribution of, of uh, praise, and an uneven distribution of benefits. When it comes to paychecks, they can be different based on educational background and whatever. But when it comes to praise and responsibilities and benefits, if they're not identical, you're going to create a queen bee attitude. Linda, great stuff as always. Wow. Just so much to take in. And, and I know our viewers are going to have questions and comments for you after watching this. Where can they get a hold of you for more information or reach out to you? Okay, um, I am going to be uh, retiring, Kevin, you've heard this for how many years? Nine. I thought when I sold my consulting business in 2007, I was retired and then I sold the Speaking Consulting Network in 2010 and I thought I was retired and I'm still very busy, but I love doing um, online training. I love doing Skype training and I'm doing a little bit of that 10 hours a week maybe and I'm still involved in uh, different dental meetings and very involved in oral cancer cause. And I'd love all of our listeners to go to OCC's website. It's oralcancercause.org. And we have a bubble challenge. This is the month of oral cancer awareness. And I'd love for all of the listeners to go to our website, oralcancercause.org and do the bubble challenge and encourage their patients to blow a bubble for those who can't. And um, all of our money goes to help the patients during treatments. And uh, we're very excited about OCC's growth in the last three years. So that'll be probably my greatest, uh, I guess, uh, legacy that I'm going to leave when I'm 105. And um, my email address, Kevin, is Linda, L-I-N-D-A, Miles, M-I-L-E-S, at Cox, that's C-O-X dot net. And anyone can email me, and I'm pretty good. I get about 100 emails a day, but I do answer them. You do, and it's amazing. And, and just a, a shout out to you and Robin Morrison for all the good things that you're doing with OCC. I know it's making a lot of difference for a lot of people. It is. And thank you, Kevin, for that. Absolutely. Linda, I cannot wait to see you in June at the Speaking Consulting Network meeting. I know that that's always a highlight of my year. And as always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. You are so welcome. And I'll see you and Dana in June. Sounds good. Take care. Bye-bye.